So when I finished high, high school, I was 16. And I came here to Union and got contaminated by these returning veterans. <laughs> contaminated and in what way, Governor? They, I was fascinated <laughs> by being with these older guys. <laughs> they taught me some things I needed to know. <laughs> we won't be specific uh, here. No, we won't be specific. <laughs> but when I say contaminated, I, uh, I really did get involved with uh, learning uh, the other side. Yes. And I heard a lot of the returning veterans talk yes. about that. Pardon me. <clears throat> And, and in the process, was uh, more emboldened yes. to learn as much as I could about what was going on in society, uh, dissecting what was happening in America, uh, why we were still as we were, uh, who were the spokespersons for what it is we were to do. And by that time now, I'm graduating and fiddled around for about a year, uh, draft bait, and I couldn't get a job because of that. And then got drafted into the Army, went to Korea, and uh, that's when a new life started. But when you were in Korea, you were awarded the Bronze Star. Yeah. Will you discuss that particular event? Yeah. Uh, I made the fatal mistake of going there and being told that if I wanted to be in chemical warfare, that I didn't have to go on the front line, and uh, I could stay back uh, and be in chemical warfare. And I said, but you only get two points a month, which means you'd have to stay over there 18 months. And I said, good Lord, because you needed 36 points to rotate. I ran into some guy I knew from Virginia, and he had just come back from the front. He said, things are quiet, man. He said, we're getting four points a month. <laughs> and the DMZ, the demilitarized zone, yes. is such now that you don't have to worry about it. The, the hostilities have lessened a bit. Like a fool, I told the man, I, I, I don't mind going to the front. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> After about a month, I went back to him and said, I think I'll go back to uh, chemical warfare if I can. He says, uh, well, it's too late. you got to be here. You know, anybody who's really been in uh, combat, doesn't, doesn't, they don't talk about it much, and I don't no. either. The, what happened there, it, to me, was a classic illustration of how people who get awards don't deserve them. People sometimes who don't get anything should. We were on a hill. It's called Pork Chop Hill. And I was of the impression that we had the hill. I didn't know that the Chinese had half of, they had more hill of the hill than we did. And there was a guy from New Jersey named Wyatt that was, I was a corporal and he was under me. And there were two Koreans assigned to the United States Army. They called them Katusas, Koreans attached to the United States Army. And we were moving over this hill thinking that we were moving back into a position and all of a sudden fire erupted, and a uh, small arms fire, and one of the Koreans got just shot, shot away. And I said, we better hit the ground. We hit the ground. And ultimately, uh, Wyatt brought it to my attention that there were, the, the fire came from a place over here, no higher than that desk. They call them hooches. That is, half of it is over the ground, half of it is in the ground. And they keep it lowered so as not to be subject to artillery fire or bombardment. And he went around behind the place, pried open the sandbags with a bayonet and pushed grenades in. And he said, and I said, I'll cover the aperture, the opening when they come out. Yes. And when that happened, we thought there may have been one or two people in the, in the hole. And it turned out there were about 20. Wow. And they thought that we were about maybe about 20 or more. And so we had learned enough Korean Chinese to tell them to put their hands up, etc. And in the process, the other Korean got shot. Mm -hmm. And we were coming on out, and then ultimately we, you know, Korea is nothing but hills. So it took us maybe about a half hour to come down the hill with these prisoners. And it was right dangerous because we had to make them all put their weapons down. And as we were coming down the hill, Wyatt was behind, I was in front. 
And uh, I had called Ann to tell the people that we were bringing these people down and be careful in terms of how they would fire on the hill if they saw people who looked like they were Chinese. And it wasn't just them, it was us too. Yes. So we eventually they got down there, and I will never forget it. The guy who we turned them over to, um, he was always just so ecstatic, so happy, and he just then I said, well, we, we've got to go back up on the hill because we had a lot of our guys were wounded, laying around, and we had to go in and clear out some more bunkers and things. And that was it, as far as I'm concerned, and we did a lot of other stuff. But when I got back to Fort Meade, Maryland, <clears throat> this was after being uh, rotating, I was told that we had to go to the uh, division review because I had, was getting this award. And I never told anybody in my family. I never said anything. I said, okay, go on down and get this award. And I started reading down the thing. Oh, I did tell the man, from the lieutenant, when I turned him over, I said, put Wyatt deserves the Silver Star because he exposed himself. He went around behind these people before anybody could cover, got as close to the thing, bayonet, put the grenades in there. He said, I'll take care of Wyatt, don't worry about it. I looked down there and saw that the Silver Star was awarded to the man that we turned the prisoners over oh, to no. at the bottom of the hill. Oh. Wyatt got nothing. Mm. And that has just so soured me with mm. reference to medals and mm -hmm. people who say they're heroes That's right. and people who talk about valor and what they've mm -hmm. done. It, 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 and that's why as you don't talk about it. That's right. I've seen so many good people killed, wounded, maimed, crippled, far better soldiers than I ever was. Uh, never got anything, never got mentioned, uh, never even got thanked. And I see all these guys get the awards, and say, well, you do this. I have never talked about it. Every now and then on an occasion like this, I'll reference it. And still, yes. I don't go into all of this stuff that you, you could go into because it's, it's um, people who've been there don't talk about it. Yes. It's just a big, big thing. And when I came back to this country, though, you're talking about twisted mind. I was of the impression that we would never be able to have equality unless we did something like that here. We were trained to fight. And you returned to segregation. Yes. 